Okay, God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share this video. This video is not for children. This video is not for, um, you know, any immature Christians. Um, I want to share something that I strongly believe God um, shared with me. I'm not going to share the dream, um, but I want to share this. And I strongly believe that this is of the Lord. Um, I believe that uh, the Lord wants men who are married to their wives and the wives who are married to, you know, their husbands, the husbands who are married to their wives. I believe that he wants us both to equally um, respect each other, love each other, uh, have joy with one another, have kindness with one another have love for one another, um, all the good attributes, you know what I mean? All the fruits of the spirit, long suffering with one another. I believe all those things, right? Galatians chapter five. Um, um, but now I'm going to talk about sex. Okay. Um, I believe now, uh, I'm not against any and I'm not saying this is somebody who was doing this because I didn't do this in my last marriage, um, which is a uh, clitoral, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, mouth, mouth, well, oral sex. I didn't, I didn't do oral sex. Me and my, me and my ex-wife, we both, we didn't do oral sex with each other. Uh, whether, you know, me to her, her to me, but this is what I, and I believe that she, uh, wondered if it was a sin. Uh, I believe that she wondered that. I think she even, uh, um, wondered that to me anyway. Uh, but, but, but regardless of the matter, um, and a lot of Christians want to know about this. A lot of Christians who are in marriages and, um, you know, relationships and even people who are, you know, considering, all these things, ma ma marriages and stuff like that, they wonder that about this. And I don't, I don't believe now. Um, I never really was big on this topic for me to like come out like, okay, guys, uh, you know, um, you know, I apologize, everybody, I was wrong. Uh, maybe I did come against it. I, I know I did on Facebook. I know I came against it on Facebook. But I stand to you today saying that I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. Um. Not saying that this is who I am now and I'm going to be this guy or it's not even about me. It's not about me. So just take me out of it altogether. But women require, they require in their, and, and understand something. For, well, let me just say this. They require clitoral stimulation. Um for their maximum, you know, orgasms. That's where they that's where they have orgasms, they release orgasms the easiest that way. Um that's the most sensitive part of their whole entire body. That's the most sexually stimulated sensitive part of their whole entire body. So, common sense says that God made them that way to receive that stimulation sexually by their partner there. How you do it, whatever you rub against it, your body, your mouth, whatever, that's your business. It's between you, God, and your partner. I have nothing to do with that. But what we do know is that women require sexually um, stimulated pleasure the most from the clitoris, right? And the Bible never speaks, of, the Holy Scriptures, I don't even like to call it the Bible, the word Bible means book. Um, the Holy Scriptures, and they don't call it the Bible, you'll never see them call it the Bible, they call it the Holy Scriptures. And it never calls anything as far as like oral sex, a sin, it never talks, I know that people say, oh, sodomite, sodomy, sodomy. But sodomy um, is looked at as anal sex because it talks about abuses of the flesh, okay? 
abuses of the flesh because anal sex is painful. It causes bleeding. It's not supposed to be there. It literally calls it abusers of the flesh. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Okay? Abusers of the flesh. Um, and, you know, and that's tied into homosexuality and all that. It's all it's mentioned in surrounding that area right there. Um, that being said, though, is that, uh, yeah, uh, men require, uh, vaginal intercourse or just sexual intercourse. Men require that for their highest, you know, um, orgasmic thrill, pleasure. That's what, that's what men desire the most. Okay. And, and women desire, um, you know, and, and, and women desire the clitoral stimulation the most. And, um, you know, I know a lot about sexual education, uh, to a degree, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, that's the, that's the head of their of their body it's almost like you know the way the penis the head of the penis is the most sensitive is the way the clitoris is the most sensitive and if you look at the overall diagram of the whole uh female reproductive anatomy um the, the reproductive system down there the the clitoris is like their head you understand in the in the in the and the penis head is our head. And so those are the both both the heads. And see, God made men and women completely different. We're like night and day. But in us being night and day, he desires us to do um, what that partner uh, requires for their pleasure. Um, and this is the majority of women and this is the majority of men who have these both opposite pleasures so it's almost like a even though it's an engaging thing with each other and most men are thinking that you know this is what women want uh as far as vaginal intercourse the, the most men are thinking you know the majority of men i can just tell you flat out the majority of men aimlessly think without even putting thought into it it's almost like you have to be indoctrinated to to fully accept that women want what they want and what they'll tell you they want which is clitoral stimulation it's like it's like men have a like a uh like a blockage that doesn't want to receive because you know, we see things the way we see things and society puts things out there the way it puts it out there. So it's almost like you have to be, you have to be relearned. You have to relearn, you have to be re-educated sexually and things that are about, you know, sex for women. Um, It's the same way how women have to be educated that about what men desire, like how we don't desire women looking fake, whether they feel more beautiful or not. That's not what most men desire. Women probably feel more beautiful, you know what I mean? Because I got fake eyelashes or I got fake hair or, you know, whatever the case. But the majority of men don't like it. And I think that women, that's the same way how women have to really get that. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> You have to really get that. And it's like, okay, well, maybe you're focused on how you think, but, you know, um, you're bound by the law of your wife and the wife is bound by the law of her husband. Uh, so really, the, so, you know, what, what appeases us sexually about these people, and I don't mean intercourse or anything with our private parts, but I'm talking about just sexually aroused by even how we look you should tend to lean towards how they feel more than how you feel otherwise you know what i mean it's not even fair uh 
And I can go on and on about things in regards to men and women because there are also men who are endangered by how a woman wants to dress. So if she wants to dress scantily clad, um, she brings a danger upon herself and upon her husband because if her husband defends or tries to defend, you don't know how it's going to end, okay? Especially among African Americans and Latinos because the majority of African Americans and Latinos are wired different than um, European Americans. European Americans tend to like, you know, they go to like clubs and, and bars. Latinos and um and African Americans, we, we get your number wherever you're at. At the gas station, we we shout, we whistle, not saying we as in myself, but what I'm saying is culturally, we're more um we're more aggressive or we're just more open or we're just more free to communicate. We don't like, you know how like you'll see Asians on the train, they're culturally just quiet and they just all on the train silent. Nobody talks and you're almost looked at as weird for like getting loud or talking. Okay, well, you're in the African-American community. You know, you got people doing the moonwalk trying to get a quarter. You know what I mean? In front of everybody with a hat, you put the quarter in the hat. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're, we're that, you know, we're doing the moonwalk frontward, backward, you know, break dancing on our head. Uh, uh, doing the jelly roll, the worm, the, the, you know what I mean? The, you know, whatever, like, you know, people are humping the floor, you know, uh, break dancing, whatever, you know what I mean? We're a different people. We're just different. God made us to be different. And, um, this is just who we are socially. So socially, you know, it's, 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 it's easier for us to just, you know, approach a woman and just starts telling her how we feel. And it's easier for a woman to just accept that as, you know, I even heard uh, white women tell me in the past, white women have not even just in the past, even since I've been a Christian, but I've had white women even tell me like, you know, that they like how black guys just approach them and stuff like that. Anyway, um, because that's not their culture. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure they feel the same way about Latinos because that's Latinos are like this that like that as well. You know, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Mexicans, they're 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 more culturally uh like us when it comes to these similarities as far as like not being all shy and not communicating and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So anyway, uh uh why I don't know why I brought that up. But I wanna say this though, uh is that um This isn't like taboo. It's probably taboo to you, but it's not taboo to God. God has given me things for brothers and sisters that were sexual and they received it and they, and not, not a lot. Actually, it was probably just um a few people. Um, it, was, it didn't happen a lot. Well, actually, hold on. It did actually happen a lot. But whether it be good or whether it be bad, God cares about sex. Um, he's giving me dreams. He's giving me visions, and um, nothing to nothing dealing with like you know uh, lust or like you know, hmm. I shouldn't probably give this word. I'm gonna keep this word. No, these were things to give, and these were things that edified. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, I just want you guys to know. Uh, and also, this ain't for people. And I'm gonna make a video about people who think that everything is a sin, right? These are the worst type of Christians. These Christians, they're not even really like, they're they're almost horrible. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. Like we have a record of what sin is in our word. Uh, we already have a record. We don't know, we don't need anybody's remixes or anybody's twist on things. And the Holy Scriptures is, is enough for anybody to get to heaven. It's enough for anybody to get filled with the Holy Ghost, for anybody to get to heaven, for anybody to walk a clean and pure life. Um, so you need to get a grip. Um, I also want to make another video, uh, but I might end up just meshing it in this, but, um, 
No, nah, I'll make another video about that. And this is about be about this this other video is gonna be about children and it's gonna be about playing with children and interacting with children in regards to parents um and playing with their children. Uh anyway. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wanted you guys to really get this. Men and women are polar opposites and we need to be satisfied on both ends. God wants everybody to be satisfied in your family. He wants your children to be satisfied. He wants your wife to be satisfied. Of course, he wants the husband to be satisfied as well as the wife, but he wants the children to even be satisfied. He even wants you to satisfy the children and of course not sexually, but I'm talking, that'd be simple perversion. Um, and you deserve to be stoned to death. Wait a minute. Um, but I'm talking about playing with them. I'm talking about, um, you know, I'm not even going to go into depths about it. But you have to play with your children. And, 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 and to God be the glory if you have multiple. But I'm talking to those who have one child, okay? You have to play with them. You have to play with their toys with them. <laughs> um yeah, you have to play with their toys with them and um things of that nature. But as far as like, you know, uh uh people who don't have multiple if, as far as people who have multiple children, um I don't believe that it's required as much. But God really wants us to satisfy everybody. You know what I mean? Um, do do it, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And also, um, not only do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Um, what says, esteem your brothers is, is, is higher than yourself. Uh, um, what else does it say? It says a number of things. Esteem yourself as high, brothers higher than yourself. Um, love, your, love your neighbor as yourself. You see what I'm saying? This sacrificial stuff, these sacrificial things instead of a me, 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 me type of deal. And um, so what's required of that is, you know, some things that you might not want to do with your children. They want to do it, but you might not want to do it. That means you might have to play with their little action figures and you know what I mean? I guess I, I said I wasn't going to make a video about this, but I'm, ta I'm making it. But anyway, you know, play with their action figures and, um, you know, you got to have an imagine play, you know, create an imagination and, you know, talk like you're like, you know, the little doll or whatever you got to do. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that this is more so required um, among uh, people with one child. <sighs> so also be, be mindful that, um, you know, they tend to use the term love language. You know what I mean? It is what it is, whatever you want to call it. But just being sensitive to people's needs and you also not uh, keeping your spouse informed of the needs that you want. One thing I'm going to tell y'all is that my ex-wife did not inform me how she liked to eat. She wanted to see how I liked to eat. And believe it or not, believe it or not, the majority, nah, not the majority, but a good handful of our arguments had to do with food, okay? Not because we couldn't, you know, have food in the house, you know? I worked two jobs at the time. No, it was because, it was because I ate differently than her this is the reason why scripture always talks about eating as fellowship okay eating as fellowship um this is the reason why you'll see some people who are out of shape because of their out of shape spouse they might not be this way but their spouse is this way and so you know i've had as a personal trainer who i used i used to be a personal trainer i used to always hear people complain about how they're gaining weight because their spouse, um, you know, uh, gain, uh, doesn't eat recklessly. I mean, eats recklessly. So now they're eating recklessly because their spouse always eats recklessly. So these are things to consider. And, um, it's, I think it's best to, um, have a spouse who eats like you, you know, 
and that I think it's ultimately best that y'all eat uh, healthy. Um, and eating the same is vital to a relationship. It's vital to a relationship. Um, because, you know, people die from how they eat. Okay? People have high cholesterol because of how they eat. People get heart attacks because of how they eat. The number one killer in the African American community isn't bullets. It isn't gang violence. It's high blood pressure. Okay? It's heart disease. Okay? So, yes, eating matters very much how you guys eat um, in a relationship. There are a lot of things that we don't talk about as Christians that need to be discussed. Um, so, yeah, uh, these are the things that I desire to share with you um, today. And uh, like I said, clitoral clitoris stimulation is is a big factor. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 do it, do it between you and her. Do it. And I'm going to tell you something. God has shown me people's marriages, okay? God has shown me, uh, you know, um, where people aren't, you know, meeting, uh, meeting, uh, meeting the mark, okay? Or where people aren't pleased. God has shown me people who aren't pleased sexually in marriages. So don't think for once that God does not desire, um, don't think for once that God does not desire uh, for you to be educated about your partner's sexual um, desires. Uh, another thing, for men who have uh, erectile dysfunction, eat food that promotes blood flow. Women who have, you know, um, Women need to eat food that promotes blood flow too. Life is in the blood. Always remember that. Life is in the blood. Eat food that promotes blood flow. So that basically means fruits and vegetables. More than meats, okay? Tons of fruits and vegetables. Eat fruits and vegetables. That that will cause you to lose weight. Um, that will cause you to uh, have blood flow. And, and as long as you have blood flow circulating through your body properly... You're going to have an erect, strong penis, okay? It's all, all you have to do is eat a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruit. That's all you got to do, okay? Um, so God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He cares about sexual education for you and for your spouse. God bless you and um, do right by one another, um, learning each other, okay? God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as well as your children, learn your children. Because every child also isn't even the same. You know what I mean? Um, some children require more attention than others. And when I say attention, I mean when it comes to playing. Um, my mother, you know, told me she didn't speak until she started turning like about 11 or 12. She wasn't even talking to her siblings. You know what I mean? Or anybody in the house. This is the kind of person she was. So all your children are different. But anyway, yeah, God bless you. I'm pretty sure y'all figured that out. But anyway, of course, that's kind of like common sense that children are different and also everybody learns differently and if you can homeschool your children because homeschooling is a uh, better means of education everybody learns differently and the teachers don't love your child like you do and they don't care for your child like you do and they won't nurture them like you will okay so they don't even compete they can't even compete with, and, I, and, 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 and then, you know, even the Bible teaches us to teach our children. The Bible actually tells us to teach our children, okay? Not even just teaching them about Jesus and God and, you know, in the Old Testament and things of that nature, but even teaching them. So we have to teach our children, okay? That's a requirement. But it's just that, you know, um, we, don't, we don't see life that way and life is different to us now because how because how we've allowed it to be. But God, he can change that for you. Anyway, God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ.